Another day, another dollar. Another step closer to the AMC MOAS. Taking a look at the chart on AMC today to talk about what is going on with the MOAS. Talking about right here in this video, so make sure you guys stay tuned. What's going on, AMC believers, apes, and followers, and subscribers, and everybody out there that enjoys AMC content? Well, you're back for more. And today, we're taking a look at the chart on AMC as it's pushed above $40. What is going on? Do we have Moas? Is Moas coming this week? Who knows? But we're going to take a look at the chart and kind of figure out when we should be looking for key levels and when, oh, when does this thing finally pop off? Let's dive into it here and talk more about the chart. So if you're wondering what these lines are on the chart, people always comment like, how do I get these lines on the chart? They're called Ripster EMA clouds. I don't get paid by them. Like I don't even know like, I have made them. I've just been using them. They're on tradingview.com and they're basically these clouds that represent the EMA. So you kind of have a, a little bit more tolerance, a little bit more wiggle room to kind of give you a better idea of where that support and resistance is based on the EMAs. And as you can see this morning, it really did kind of follow that green EMA cloud so beautifully. And you can see as it gets extended, the cloud grows in size. And then as it pulls back, the cloud then starts to get smaller. And then when it breaks below the cloud, the cloud then turns red as that pullback. But the thing is, let's look at different time frames, right? Let's look at the different time frames. So on the 15 minute chart, it's still super bullish, which is funny because if you go from the five minute chart, it's like, wow, okay, this thing looks like it's about to, you know, roll off and dip down here. But then when you go over here to the 15 minute chart, it's a totally different picture. And that's one of the reasons I really do enjoy, or I do use the EMAs on the 15 minute chart really more than anything to kind of figure out where is a good time to buy, where is a good time to sell. And you can see today, these EMA is really showing perfect little breakouts if you were trading it. But I'm thinking that a lot of you guys are probably, you're probably holding AMC, you're not trading it. So, hey, you know the other day I was thinking about it, who out there, which group of people really knows how to hold and be a diamond hand? And then I thought, well, it's clearly the AMC guys. So if you guys want to learn more about NFTs, you want to come join our new community, you want to get into the cryptocurrency space, and you want to be diamond hand masters, well, come on over. I'll put a link down below. You can check it out. We got a new YouTube channel talking about NFTs. And then also we're starting a Discord group you can join as well. You can get in on the ground floor and be one of the first 100 members. You'll be an OG member for the rest of your life. There's a link down below. Let's get back into the video. You know, if you were kind of looking for a trade this morning on AMC and it popped above that 41 area, kind of that little flag there, well, all the way up there to 43.50. So either you'd have captured about $2 in profit there, you know, if you're trading AMC on that style. But like I said, I doubt that many of you are trading it. Probably a lot more of you are holding it. Now, let's talk about the hold here. Let's talk about the hold. I like to look at the bigger picture when it comes down to really any of these stocks or in general, looking at, you know, the daily chart first off, you can see on the daily chart here, which interesting is I drew these lines just the other day here on the daily chart and look at how, how interesting this move has happened or how it's happening. So the question is, okay, we, number one, we know that we bounced off 33 off that $30 area. We talked about this being a higher low. We had this 30 to uh, well, $30, $28 area as a kind of higher low from this move. So that was our higher low there. And then on this move here, we've got a new higher low at that 32 to $35 level. Or And now you can see pushing up there above $40. What's interesting though is every time we push up, you can see how the selling comes in we kind of end the day. Every time we push up here on the daily candles, we have these little like wicks and wicks. So it's really showing, you know, the selling pressure is still coming in there. Obviously the shorts are trying to sell this down and hold it down. Or is it people taking profit that are trading? it? It's very kind of, I would say it's more so probably the shorts trying to keep this thing in control here and keep it on the downside here. And really until I feel like we break above $45, then we're not in the clear just yet. And like I talked about the other day, like how this move is happening right now, if we push up here to the $45 area and we get denied, well then 32 to, I would say, I would, 
I don't know. I just feel like if we push up here to the 45 area and we get denied, it's going to lose a lot of momentum and we're going to crash pretty quickly. Similar to this move, how we dropped from 52 down here to like 46 and then just continue to slide off. And these are daily candles. So you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, 10, 11, almost two weeks of selling before finally finding a bottom and then popping back up there. So it's kind of interesting to see how these charts play out and especially think about the overall mental and FOMO aspect here as well when these charts play out the way they do because you know the reason that these charts these candles have the wicks and they show us the price action it's also showing us the overall kind of human interaction as well with the price of the stock and the FOMO and you can see like the other day we had a big pop from the 36 area you had a lot of FOMO it pops up and then it pulls right back down there so it's very interesting to see the emotions behind the trade now if we look at the weekly chart here Again, we'll get a bigger picture on the weekly chart in terms of the trend here. And like I said, we drew these lines just the other day. So these lines are still valid. And we know right now that that $45 area is the key area. $45 to $46 is going to be the key area because we don't want this to happen once again where we push up to that resistance and then we just sell right back down, which it's looking like as long as this kind of holds the way it's holding, it's really kind of you know, we're going to test this $45 area this week, 100%. We will test this area here at the $45 level. The question is, at that point, can we break out and then make this move like that up there, you know, and start to get parabolic here? Really, you know, we got that resistance there at the $52 level as well. So pretty much like 52 from the 46 to the $52 level is going to be a battleground because the shorts do not want this thing to go so if we break over 46 and we try to push the 42 there's gonna be a lot of battles going on there and a lot of people trying to hold it down the shorts people taking profit as well you gotta think about the idea that people that bought at 35 or 36 dollars in the last week or two if they push to 52 and it starts to get resistance it starts to turn down well there's gonna be a lot of selling and i think that's kind of similar to what happened to this move here you had a lot of people kind of loading up consolidating here it pushes up it gets denied People are like, well, I'm going to jump out, take profit. I'll try to buy it at a lower level. And that's kind of the emotional aspect of it, right? So when we push up that resistance, what happens? People are like, I'm going to now take profit because I think I can buy it back at a cheaper price. And we've seen, you know, with Bitcoin and other crazy commodities and moves and stocks that sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. So only time will tell. But looking at the weekly chart right now, we obviously, I mean, 45 to $46, we just know that that's clearly going to be resistance there. And it's pretty easy to see kind of what is going on. Let's kind of get rid of some of these lines here. Just give us a better idea. Like now that we've already kind of identified, we know, we pretty much know how stocks move up and down here in the wave formation. You know, most stocks don't just go straight to the moon. Although AMC went straight to the moon from the $12 area to 75, you can see now we have, you know, the big impulse to the upside, the pullback, the consolidation, the next pulse to the upside the pullback the consolidation looking very much like a wave here but what's interesting is if you look on the weekly chart here and you look at the emas there the last time that we got really tight like that and then we kind of squeezed up so the question now is does this ema start to grow do we push up here into that 50 dollars level this week because if we do that the other question you know really comes down to can we break through 52. if we break i believe personally if we break through 52 here then $70 comes pretty quickly. So over 52, then it's like 70 to 100 pretty quickly, just like that. And I will say I do own call options that expire in December. I have $70 call options that expire in December. And I believe that those are going to print. They're going to print. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they're going to print, obviously. But there's also this play out as well. If we get denied at 52, well, then we could, you know, continue to consolidate and be stuck in this overall trend till November and then December, and, you know, I'm hoping by the end of December that we finally get molasses here because you're thinking that a lot of the hedge funds at the end of the year are finally, like, okay, we got to figure out what we're going to do going into the end of the year. Do we take the loss? Do we take the profit? Vice versa. There will be a lot of kind of money moving around towards the end of the year. People just trying to finish their books and just try to get done and, and lock in profit, vice versa. So it'll be interesting to see if AMC does consolidate in this overall trend for the next few weeks or months. At the end of the year in December, do we finally just get that explosion of volatility and action as some of the bigger hedge funds or some funds are like, hey, you know, I'm going to 
finally just kind of close out this position. We're tired of it. We're done with it. We want to start the new year with a new idea or a new plan, or maybe they just hold right through the new year as well. Who knows really at the end of the day, but that's the kind of way that I would think that there will definitely be some type of covering, some type of action going into the end of the year, just for the idea of, you know, people wanting to kind of close out the books for the end of the year here. And well, here we are, I'd say, I mean, it's pretty cut and dry at the end of the day. There's not much more I can say here. I can sit here all day long and draw, you know, lines on charts and talk about theories and ideas, but it's pretty clear to see kind of what is going on right now with this move on AMC. The question now really is if we pull back to the 36, do we hold or do we pull back down here to 15? I think if we pull back down here to the 15, it's going to be very, 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 very bad for business and very bad for everybody. But I mean, obviously we'll see what happens, but I think either way, my $70 calls that expire in December are looking pretty good. I think they're up today a little bit, but I think in general, I mean, there's, they got plenty of, plenty of time here, plenty of time for this to go to the moon, because you got to think if it goes to the moon in November, if it goes to the moon, you know, the next few days, my $70 calls in December are going to be looking real pretty. So there it is. If you guys haven't already, do me one big favor. Hit that like button, subscribe button, all the buttons down below. I'll talk to you guys later on.